I'm a full-time playwright, so I spend a lot of my time with a pad of paper in front of me. I write longhand, and I write plays, and now and then I write musicals. It's about eight, ten hours a day, regularly. To be a writer, you have to write all the time, and I write. Uh, and then when it comes time to do productions, like this, I pack my suitcase and, and come and join the production. And if it's a new show on Broadway, rewrite, maybe take the show out of town. And that's when I'm with a whole family of people. I'm basically an optimist at heart. And I basically believe that great literature makes you better and that the humanities live within you and help you grow. These, may, these are old-fashioned ideas. They're not, they're not very fashionable right now. Certainly, they're not. I write comedies very much in the tradition, starting with Shakespeare, into that 18th century comic world of Goldsmith and Sheridan and O'Keefe, and that world that then ends up being in Shaw and um, Coward, and it's a great tradition, and it's a tradition that, that is in touch with the notion of humanity, and that we as a civilization move the ball forward by writing with integrity and with honesty ab about the human condition. I try to write play after play that in some way affects people so that they turn around and look at themselves and say, how can I make the world better? How can it be a better place to live? How can it be better for our children to live here? I don't mean it to sound corny, but little by little I write plays, comic plays, that in a sense give people, I hope, a real vision of hope. When it was originally produced on Broadway, this won the Tony as Best Musical. It won a bunch of other Tonys as well, but it won Best Musical. It played for about five years on Broadway. Then it went to London and played about another five there. And I won the Olivier Award, which is their yeah. Tony right. Award for this. And then it was revived in London last about two years ago. And it went from the Regent's Park uh, production to the West, back to the West End, and it won another Olivier. I always wanted to be in the theater since I was a little kid. My mother had grown up in Brooklyn and had been a model and then had gotten, gotten her feet wet in the theater world. She introduced me to the theater when I was a youngster and I thought, this is it. I just want to be in the theater. But you don't have to be an actor to be in the theater. There are lots of other things that you can do. You can direct, you can design, you can stage manage, and you can write. And of all those things I wanted to do most, little by little, was become a writer. Uh, and it wasn't a question, oh, I think I'll go away and be a novelist. It was clearly, oh, I want to be a playwright. And, and, and when I was at Haverford, I wrote, at the time we had a tradition called Class Night. Class night was a big deal when I was there. Bryn Mawr and Haverford got together, brother and sister school, and we would put on half hour, but real plays, one act co musical comedies, oh, wow. okay. major one act musical comedies, right. had to have music in them, that parodied the school in some way, right. like a hasty pudding kind of thing. So I wrote two of those, both sophomore and senior, and senior year we, we won, which was great. I, ha I was a music theory and composition major, and an English, double major with English, so I, composing music was my thing. So I wrote songs, and then I wrote the book, and, and we did these shows. And I directed them. You know, I was really into this stuff. So Haverford was a great place for me to develop as somebody who loved the theater and wanted to, to do some of everything. That's the great opportunity you have at Haverford. There's not thousands of people in your way and saying, oh, how can I really be the one who writes it or directs it or acts in it? Hey, if you're that one guy at Haverford who really says, I want to spend half of my semester writing class night <laughs> and directing it, well, maybe you won't study as much, but you sure can do it. Haverford is a place that, because it's, it's small, you're allowed to do these things, and therefore you gain a lot of confidence because you really get to do them. You're thrown into it. There's nobody there but you. I mean, you have a studio and studio art. You're just there. It might be you and the professor, and there's no place to hide. There's <laughs> just that, there's no place to hide at Haverford. My brother had gone to Haverford, so I knew about it because uh, he had gone and we'd visited him as, as you make those decisions, do you want a large university? And for some people, that's just the right decision. For me, what I loved was the idea of going there and having a family. At Haverford, I knew all the professors. The, my mentor 
uh, uh, Ralph Sargent, who has passed away, he was uh, the professor of English who I took my Shakespeare from. Uh, and then it ended up being a one-on-one -on -one seminar every year because I did advanced work with him in Shakespeare. So I'd go to his house and we'd sit and have tea and we'd talk about Shakespeare three times a week. Uh, and that is just what I wanted. I made all my best friends for a lifetime there. Uh, I, I've stayed in touch with them. We all wanted to be in a place where learning mattered. I've always taken the view that education is learning how to learn the rest of your life. Being educated, you educate someone so that for the rest of their life they can continue to learn on their own. And that's, it seems to me, exactly what Haverford gave me, and that's why I went, and that's what I got out of it. I couldn't wait to go to those terrific history courses, that wonderful American history course, the wonderful uh, uh, English survey course. These were things I couldn't wait to get to, and they were fulfilled at Haverford in a wonderful way because the teachers were so great, and the students were so interesting. They were all really smart and interesting. Haverford was a great place to learn about the arts because, as in your experience, you get to really do things in a hands-on way, so you, you, you do it. The lesson I learned from Haverford is what you need to do, and this is very Quaker and very Haverford, is do your best and do it honestly and do it with integrity. And if you do those things, you've done your best. And after that, you know, let things fall where they may. There is a tie in there with the honor code. There's a tie with the integrity that you, you leave Haverford with a level of integrity. Uh, uh, and that's very important through life.